There's been a trend in uh, YouTube in the last couple of years of people going more toward highly mobile video production styles. Image stabilized, optical or electronic stabilized cameras and gimbal type mounts for stabilization, using action cameras, uh, using drones, uh, using 360 cameras to be able to take a person's video production out into the the great yonder, the great outdoors, and make it more of a highly mobile kind of a video production style. But I've been working more toward kind of just the opposite. I've been building this stationary kind of video production studio for a particular reason, and I thought I wanted to show you guys around today. This is my little YouTube studio slash office. I have a corner desk with my computer, some stereo equipment, a typewriter, a bunch of books and papers and clutter up on the shelves. I have a closet here which has some clothes in it and all my typewriters and a lot of other junk and clutter. And then I have this table right here and this table is my main video production area. It's a folding camping table but I have this piece of plywood on top of it that has carpet stapled to it. And that's been my main video table for a few years now. But this particular rig, this whole structure here, is something that I put together just a couple weeks ago. And the whole intention of it was to have a like a cage. And if you guys know what cages are, a cage is a device you put around a video camera that has hard points for mounting lights and microphones and monitors and other kinds of accessories. Well, what I wanted to do is build a cage specifically for my entire video production table and that's what this is. This is made from three quarter inch poplar, the kind of sticks you get at the hardware store. The uh, corners are just put together with these, sh these long one inch and a quarter sheet metal screws that are pre-drilled with pilot holes. So the whole thing kind of goes together like that fairly simply. It's lightweight and it uh, is clamped to the uh, carpeted plywood base on the table here on all four corners so it's nice and stable. I have four lights and these lights are simply hardware store utility lights with uh, bright LED daylight balanced 5000 Kelvin balanced LED lamps and then I have diffusers built on the front of these which is simply drafting vellum. Sheets of drafting vellum that are clipped on here with bulldog clips and I have four lights, two up above that shine more on myself and the background and then these two foreground lights shine more down on the table so when I'm showing something on video it'll be evenly lit. Uh, the cage here provides a nice convenient place to clamp these lights and you can kind of move them around a little bit and I have a video monitor, a 7 inch monitor I'm using to monitor my camera. It's hard mounted up here. And I also have a microphone mount. It's just a piece of plywood with a shotgun mic mounted above. And I can use either this Shure microphone or this lesser expensive Star, which both of them do a pretty good job. I think the Shure microphone has a little bit better audio quality. But around here on the front side where I sit, uh, there is the monitor, there's the four lights. My microphone is right up here pointing back at me. And normally I would have set a tripod on the floor. That tripod, in fact. And I have places on the floor for, ma for marking the feet of the, the two front legs of the tripod so I can get the tripod set up at approximately the same place. But this is the latest change I've done to this whole setup. The problem with setting up a tripod in this cramped little office space was that it interfered with my chair and I had to pull my office chair out over here and it was easy to bump the legs of the tripod and uh, mess everything up. So I mounted this piece of laminate flooring and I'm using a couple clamps and I have it clamped to the underside of the table and with an eye bolt underneath here I have the Joby ball head mounted elevated up a little bit and onto that I can attach my camera I can get it 
click it in place. So that's my camera. My main studio camera is the Panasonic GH3. And that's what I use to uh, record the studio shots with usually. I have the uh, Panasonic remote cable to my remote over here so I can focus remotely and start and stop the recording. I have an HDMI cable going out to the monitor. You have a little bit of the table down here in the view. The bottom of the camera, you see my little YouTube logo on the upper right corner, and it's pretty cool. Nice stationary fixed support. And of course the camera shoots out to the edge and it barely misses the frame of the uh, cage, and so you get the curtain in the backdrop. The microphone hopefully is not in the way. Although the last video I shot, I got a little bit of the fuzzies of the dead cat on the top of the picture. I just got to be careful of that. And then I sit right there. The microphone cable, I forgot to mention that. So this extension cable from the microphone plugs into the camera right there. Here I am sitting at the table in there. But the position I would be in for recording, and I can see my monitor right up there. Let me half press the focus on the camera. There it is. Doing that with this, half press the shutter button to focus. It's kind of a neat little setup. I have these earphone buds plugged into the audio output of the monitor, so when I want to monitor my audio on playback, I set the camera to playback mode, start the clip playing back, and I can put these on and uh, watch the playback on my monitor and listen to the audio, make sure it's good and everything. So it's kind of a cool little setup. I have enough desk space on this table that I can put different things off camera around me to reach if I'm talking about something. I can grab it and show it. And what I do a lot of times if I'm wanting to show a close-up of an object um, I set the focus box on the camera in the upper third in the middle and so I'll set it up here like this and half press the shutter button to focus on it and then I move it down and I can start talking about it in front of the camera like that and the main temptation, the main problem of this whole setup is when you have the flippy screen which we need to flip around like that, when you have the flippy screen deployed it's tempting to want to look at the at the flippy screen monitor or to look up here. You can glance at the monitor to make sure everything is framed up right and you're focused, but you got to concentrate on looking and talking to the lens. That's where all the people live. There's people in there somewhere. I don't know how that works. And my little monitor is powered right now from an AC adapter. I don't have to use the batteries on it. So I have the AC adapter wire wired up with string and it goes down to the plug strip down here that I can power it with so no more batteries running on that and I like the whole setup here and by the way my uh, my Panasonic GH3 uses a medium sized HDMI connector whereas this camera uses the extra small size HDMI connector so um, I have both cables ready to be used depending on which camera I'm using on this mount here. Now I normally don't keep the um, camera mounted on this little platform when I'm not using it. I'll pop it off and sit it, probably put it in its case, but uh, the little platform I'm going to keep here and it actually is okay. I can turn my chair around, work on the computer and then the back of the chair is not going to hit this, but also what's cool is the armrest of the chair will fit snugly underneath here. Now all the way over to the video table itself and so I don't have to worry about the the legs of the tripod getting in the way and this is kind of a neat little thing and yeah it's kind of makeshift you know put together with clamps and stuff but uh, sometimes the best ideas are makeshift so this is something I wanted to show you that I've gotten away from using cable ties or plastic tie wraps and I'm using this cord this string now for attaching tying, bundling cables and wires. I have some more down here. Let's see, where is it? Yeah, down here. I found the plastic cable ties. They don't really hold up, especially outdoors in the weather and the bright sun of New Mexico. The UV light kind of destroys them, and I just find using little pieces of string actually works better for me and a heck of a lot less expensive. So, cable ties with pieces of string. That's my, my little innovation. And if you do use a ball of string for cable ties, don't use nylon string. Because nylon string 
won't stay knotted it'll, it'll come loose so you want to use the actual fiber kind of natural fiber string like hemp string or whatever I don't know if you guys remember the movie Blazing Saddles. This is the classic comedy film directed by Mel Brooks. And one of the things that was really notable in that movie is how they broke through the fourth wall near the end of the movie. And if you don't know the idea, the concept of the fourth wall comes from, I think it's really from the, the stage, the theater era prior to cinema. But the idea of you have these three walls of the stage and the fourth wall is the wall toward the audience, the opening that the audience sees. And the idea in cinema of breaking the fourth wall is, is sort of becoming self-conscious of the filmmaking process to the audience. And what they did with Blazing Saddles is, of course, they literally broke through the, the screen of the movie theater with this cowboy action scene. And all the cowboys and horses and cattle came rushing up the stage of the theater and out onto the back lot of the... Uh, studio where the Blazing Saddles itself was shot at. So that was the classic example of breaking through the fourth wall. So we've kind of, that's what we're kind of doing here. We're breaking through the fourth wall, showing you the background behind my new little studio setup. What I like about this setup and why I think it's, it's kind of important to have a stationary setup like this as opposed to one of these ultra mobile setups. And there's nothing wrong, by the way, with ultra mobile. And I think I'm going to be trying to improve my my setup as far as being able to go out and about. But what I like about this fixed setup is I literally can push that button on the plug strip down below the table here, turn all the lights on, and the monitor gets turned on automatically. Clip on the camera to the little mount here uh, that is just permanently mounted and just plug in three cables to the camera and turn it on and start recording. Everything is set up and framed pretty well. so. It's kind of a neat little setup to where I can just sit down and in a few moments I can start recording. And I'm hoping that the stationary aspect of this studio setup actually will enable me to be more spontaneous because it requires less setup and teardown. The thing is just here, ready to be used, and I'm hoping to be a little more spontaneous and a little more spontaneous kind of videos and subject matter as well. And I hope to have the flexibility in this setup to be able to enable that creativity to happen. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. And oh yeah, let me show you that little focusing trick. So you uh, you take the object you want to show and you have to first move it up high enough to get into the focus box that's in front of my face and you half press the shutter button until it focuses on the foreground object and then I can now that it's focused I can keep it in that same focus plane and now I can talk to it and I can look at it and I can show you the object and you notice my face is slightly out of focus because I'm focused now in the close-up here and this is a Tackstar uh, SGC 598, very inexpensive shotgun mic. It doesn't have the, the deep tones of a better quality mic, but it's fairly okay quality, uh, actually, for what it is. Anyways, so now I focus back on my face. Boom. And that's kind of the setup. I have these two lights down below that enables me to light the foreground a little bit better. So objects down here in front of the camera are better lit and also back here is more evenly lit. It's all 5,000 degree Kelvin lighting so I can light balance my cameras and hopefully have consistent colors and everything. The microphone is right up here, less than maybe about a foot away and yet off camera. So anyways, I like this little setup. I think it's really cool. And uh, I have these two little side tables of this camping table down here that I can use. I have this one over here. I didn't show you. It's all full of junk and clutter and everything like, you know, usually happens on a studio. You know, there's this trend recently of uh, Marie Kondo, the uh, Japanese lady who does the whole thing about neatening and straightening and organizing. And one of her principles is to uh, have joy in whatever it is that you're doing. Take joy in each one of the items. And I actually take joy in my clutter. And that's why the Marie Kondo method doesn't work for me, you know, because I have great joy in the clutter because the clutter represents potential creativity. All these things around you that you can work with. So there. And I had to show you this other little thing that I've been doing is, of course, this camera does have an external mic jack and you can mount a microphone up on top here. But this is one thing you can do if you don't want to do a microphone is uh, this is a little piece of brass with a little uh, 
plastic mount that slips onto the hot shoe on top of the camera. And the reason why you want to use that, it's a reflector. The two microphones that are built into the camera are right above here, right in front of the hot shoe, and they kind of point straight up even though they're omnidirectional. So this collects sound from in front and bounces it down onto the microphones and it makes it a lot more directional, front directional. Well, just as I was finishing this video, the postman came and left a package in the courtyard. So we're going to unbox it. And we're not using a tactical knife, no, we're using a strategic knife. This is the little open nail. You slowly, strategically rotate the locking ferrule, and then you slowly and strategically flip open the blade, and then you slowly and strategically turn the locking ferrule so the blade is locked in position. Okay, this is a package from my old friend Mitch, back in Ohio. He's my tape recorder buddy. And uh, he has sent me a package. Look at that, a little letter. And what do we have? We have bubble wrapped stuff. Hmm. Well, this is interesting. This is for a Hermes Rocket Baby, something there. And, okay. Hey, looky, we have a full-size compact cassette tape and a micro cassette tape wrapped up. Hmm, interesting, interesting, more packing. Mitch is always really good about packing stuff. Ooh, what do we have here? Oh my goodness, look at that. Oops, oh my goodness, look at that. Okay, okay, let's start with the smaller of the two and, uh, I love bubble wrap and tape I don't know why I do but I do ah this is a realistic micro 51 look at that pretty darn cool and okay here we go another package. We open it very slowly and strategically with our strategic knife. Craftsman's worker's knife, not tactical weapon knife. So we're not trying to weaponize, we're just trying to open stuff. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Handy Cassette 2. I've never seen one of these, never even heard of one. What is this? This is American Printing House for the Blind. Oh, yes. Oh, man. This is cool, Mitch. Thank you so much. And okay, so we got another little package here. This is a little baggie, a little Ziploc baggie. And, okay, reading Mitch's letter, these are replacement feet for the bottom of my Hermes rocket that Mitch has provided for me. He noticed that on one of my videos, the rocket was uh, pretty much sliding around on the table and the feet on the bottom are all flattened, and so he's provided me with some replacement feet. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Not to be ignored here is the... Two tapes. So we have Joe and Mitch's audio letter, and then we have an ongoing micro cassette audio letter as well. And of course, when we're done with our strategic tool knife, we have to unlock the blade with the ferrule, slowly fold the blade back into its closed position, and then lock it closed. And then we slowly but strategically put it back into its little leather holster and then I put it into my tool bag out in the garage where it rests ready to be used for non-weaponry strategic use. I wanted to mention that I also have a place to mount a camera directly overhead off this cage pointing straight down. I didn't do that during the unboxing. I wanted to more unbox it right in front of you. But uh, 
I'm also going to take advantage of this mounting point up ahead. And this is one of the main reasons why I also wanted to build this cage, is to have a place to mount a microphone, a, like in a boom setup, and also an overhead camera. So I'm more flexible here. And uh, everything just happens around this little cage. But, uh, yep, unboxing videos, we can do them now a lot better. And, oh, by the way, I read Mitch's letter, and it's a great letter, and uh, dated February 8th, and he wrote it typed it on a Commodore 2200 typewriter, which is basically a console-made typewriter, and he's advising me I need to look for one of those. Thank you, Mitch, for the letter. I really appreciate it. I look forward to listening to your our audio letter that we've been doing ongoing on microcassette and a little bonus audio letter on compact cassette. Thank you so much. Okay, this is Joe Van Cleve, and... Uh, this is one of my tools for staying creative and for being more creative, building my own creative studio space. And uh, I hope you guys have the opportunity and the space to do that also. Well, until next time, you guys stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.